اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر 3 ان دا سیریز فک اف تہارت ان دس ویڈیو ویل بی ڈسکسنگ سم مسلینیس ایشوز ریگارڈنگ وضو ان دا فرسٹ ٹو ویڈیوز وی ڈسکسڈ دی فرائض اف وضو اینڈ دی فیکٹرز وچ نالیفائی اٹ ان ڈیٹیل اینڈ ان دس ویڈیو ویل بی ڈسکسنگ سم ادر ایشوز وچ آر امپورٹنٹ اینڈ گڈ ٹو نو regarding wuzu so we'll be discussing number one that uh, if you're doing wuzu and uh, it breaks while you are doing it does it need to be started all over again similarly we'll discuss that if you are doubtful regarding uh, if you have watched some part or not uh, or and after doing wuzu you're doubtful if you did your wuzu or not what is the ruling regarding that is it compulsory on you to do that again similarly uh, what about a mosquito or some other insect which bites you uh, and sucks your blood does that nullify wuzu because uh, blood b- basically in some conditions nullifies your wuzu that we discussed in the last video similarly does seeing one's private parts break wuzu or you see someone else sit there uh, does it nullify your wuzu or not a newborn baby vomits milk uh, on her mother is that milk impure uh israf extravagance while uh, making wuzu uh, what is uh, what is exactly israf when you do wuzu and uh, is wuzu compulsory upon a nabalik so if a nabalik a child is offering a prayer or directly touching quran is it compulsory for him to make wuzu we'll discuss all these items so number 1 does wuzu need to be started all over again if it breaks while doing it uh yes uh, just like any of the factors which nullifies wuzu breaks wuzu completely and you have to do all over it again so for example you were doing wuzu and you had washed your uh, face and hands and now for example you pass air from your uh, from your back or maybe uh, some any other factor that breaks your wuzu uh, occurs so you have to start all over again and your complete wuzu uh, is nullified uh, this is Uh, this is uh, this ha- this is very clear that while making wuzu it's not that if some factors factor occurs you can continue your wuzu from that point you have to do it all over again the second point is being doubtful regarding washed part while making wuzu so while making wuzu you are doubtful that okay you wash your face and now you're washing your hands and then you are doing massa of your head but now you are doubtful if you wash your face or not and maybe there was some time gap between between it because doing them consecutively continuously is not compulsory it's sunna but it is possible that for example you have washed your face and washed your hands and then uh, someone rang the bell of your door and you went on the door you you met him you talked with him and now you are back and no fact and me during this time no factor occurred which breaks your wuzu so it is uh, completely all right that you continue your wuzu from the point where you left it you don't have to start all over again so but now you are doubtful if uh, you wash your face or not so if this is the first time where it occurred with you you should wash that part but if it's kind of a suspicion that always occurs with you some people are in a habit of this that they are always suspicious about if they uh, wash some part or not then it is not compulsory uh it you you don't you don't need to repeat it if you if you are uh, sure or you remember that you did it then that's that's okay and you can uh, rely on that the third point is one uh, completed his wuzu and now is doubtful regarding it so you did complete your wuzu you remember that and now you are doubtful that did you were uh, did you make wuzu or not so if a person was in a state of wuzu and then later he doubts whether he has wuzu or not then in such a condition it is not necessary for him to make wuzu because the religious ruling is that al yaqinu la yazulu bi shak so you remember that you did wuzu and now for example you have a waswasa a shaitan a, a distraction from shaitan and you are doubtful if your wuzu uh, broke or some factor occurred or maybe you did not do it all right in all of these factors if it's only a shak shak or suspicion means that uh, it, shak means that you are 50 50 regarding that you are not sure that factor occurred you are only doubtful so if you are doubtful uh, this doubt won't break uh, 
the the state of your wuzu because when you complete completed that wuzu you you were sure that was your yakin and now you are in doubt that is shak al yakinu la yazulu bi shak so the doubt won't it is what what you were sure about so uh, sometimes if it if it occurs for the first time you can repeat it but if it uh, goes on again and again then uh, you don't need to I worry about this this is only a waswasa shaitani distraction that is done to uh, keep you away from prayers now the point does mosquito bite nullify wuzu so if a small leech a uh, bed bug mosquito fly draws blood the wuzu will not be nullified but the same principle applies that for example if a big leech draws blood and drinks an amount that if it had been a normal bleed it would have the ability to flow when the wuzu then the wuzu will be nullified otherwise not so the same principle applies that if the blood is in such a quantity that if it had bleed it would have the ability to flow then your wuzu would be nullified but in normal circumstances when it's when it's a very small mosquito or fly the amount of blood is so less that if it were to bleed it it wouldn't have the ability to flow so that wouldn't nullify your wuzu the this we we discussed this point uh in the previous lecture in detail okay uh does seeing one's private parts break wuzu uh that's very common among people that if for example they see their own sitter their own private parts or they or they see for example someone else private part they think that they the wuzu has nullified and they uh make wuzu again that is not true this is baseless and incorrect uh wuzu does not break one remains in a state of wuzu uh but this is not this is makru this is not uh in fact intentionally seeing someone sit there is uh, haram so this is uh, uh not allowed in islam and and one has to keep uh, care that his private parts are completely covered so but uh, but in case by chance if someone sees his private parts or uh someone else private parts uh then uh it is uh, then it would uh, it wouldn't break the wuzu then that's a very important point that which people uh, do not really care about that is a newborn baby vomits milk is it impure yes if a newborn baby but there is a condition if a newborn baby suckling baby vomits milk then it is regarded as being impure if it is a mouthful mouthful i told i told you in the previous lecture is some is is in a quantity that is difficult to stop that is difficult to control in your mouth is mouthful so if a newborn baby vomits milk that is mouthful in quantity then it is impure but if the milk did not reach the stomach but only reach the chest then came up again it will be regarded as being pak so the real thing is that if the milk reaches the stomach and it basically mixes up with the other uh with with other compounds uh then it becomes impure but if for example uh the suckling baby uh only uh, drinks milk and the moment uh the baby drinks milk it immediately vomits out then that milk is coming from the chest and that is not impure but if uh the baby makes a proper vomit and you know that that is coming from its stomach then all of that milk is impure and it would uh if it in if it is in a uh quantity that makes your uh clothes impure as well and then you won't be able to uh offer namaz in that we will inshallah discuss those uh, quantity of impurity which reaches your clothes and when that cloth is not uh, is, is not valid to offer namaz we will discuss this in detail in some later videos uh, but the thing to understand right here is that the milk that comes from a suckling baby from its stomach is impure now let's talk about israf uh, extravagance while making wuzu So when taking water in the hand be sure not to allow water to spill uh, which without reason as this will be regarded as israf being wasteful so israf is a sin but do remember that israf is only occurs when using water does not have any worldly benefit or nor benefit of akhira so the benefit of akhira is for example making wuzu you have to offer prayer and prayer would uh, bring you benefit of akhira it's compulsory so when you uh, spend water on that when you weigh, when you use water on that that is basically the benefit of benefit of akhira and then for example someone before making wuzu was feeling very hot uh, and then to get to get some cold uh, coldness 
he uh, he uses water on his hands is his leg or maybe it's very cold outside and to get some heat he uses hot water coming out of the geyser uh, before doing wuzu or while doing wuzu he spends some more water on himself to get to get the heat when there is so much cold outside so this water is not for the benefit of akra but it is for the it is for the worldly benefit it is for one's own health one's own state of mind so this is also not israf israf is something which which does not have any worldly benefit nor benefit of akra this is an important thing that we need to understand and remember and then the last point from this lecture is is wuzu compulsory upon nabalik a nabalik uh, is a child uh, who hasn't reached the age of puberty uh, uh, wuzu is not farz upon a nabalik but it is better to have uh, him or her make wuzu so that when they may get into the habit of making wuzu thereby learning how to make wuzu and also become conscious in regards to the laws related to wuzu so nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when your child uh, gets to the age of 7 uh tell him to uh, offer prayer when he gets to 9 uh make him offer prayer and even if you have to beat him so which means that at the age of 7 a child is not an adult it is the namaz is not compulsory on that child but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam highly recommended that you should uh, make your child offer prayer so when when you make your child offer prayer you would also teach him how to make wuzu so by the rule of law the fatwa is that wuzu is not farz upon an abalik but still the recommended practice is that you should teach him how to do wuzu so uh that's it from the this lecture it was a short one because it had uh, some miscellaneous uh fiqh masail related to wuzu in the next uh, lecture uh, next few lectures we'll be discussing ghusl the ritual bath and we'll be discussing the mentioning of Uh, ghusl in quran and hadith similarly we will discuss the farais compulsory acts in ghusl and the factors which nullify it so uh, inshallah please stay tuned and watch this uh, channel and keep following this uh, series you will get to learn a lot from this thank you allah hafiz